Halt sein erster Auftritt im Schwergewicht mit genau 95 Kilogramm offiziellem Kampfgewicht. 1,87 Meter ist er Großprofiboxer seit dem Jahr 2004 mit dieser Bilanz. 35 Kämpfe, 34 Siege, unglaubliche 25 Mal durch Knockout. Sein Trainer, Ole Wegner, der amtierende Weltmeister im Cruisergewicht. Aus Bielefeld, Deutschland, der Herausforderer, The Challenger, Marco Captain Hu. Across the ring in the blue corner, the defending champion in schwarzen Trunks, der Weltmeister. Aus Russland steht in der blauen Ecke. Er ist 32 Jahre alt. Sein offizielles Kampfgewicht ganz genau 104 Kilogramm. 1,88 Meter ist er groß. Profiboxer seit dem Jahr 2005 mit einer atemberaubenden Bilanz. 23 Kämpfe, 23 Siege, 16 davon durch Knockout. Sein Coach Alexander Siemen. Check auf Russland, der Olympiasieger und Weltmeister im Schwergewicht. The reigning and defending heavyweight champion of the world, the undefeated Russian warrior, Alexander Ruski Vityaz Pavetki. Wer trägt den Weltmeistergürtel im Schwergewicht nach diesem Fight? Marco Huck oder Alexander Pobjetkin. Die Entscheidung jetzt live aus der Arena in Stuttgart. Referee Louis Pavon with the final instructions. And after the classical culture of the anthems and the build-up, it's down to a bit of heavyweight brutality. Real confidence in the build-up from Pavetkin, who expressed surprise that Hook wanted this opportunity in the land of the Giants. He afforded himself a smile when he heard his countrymen launching themselves at the national anthem in the build-up. And here we go. Can Hook bring that cruiserweight speed to the table or bring to bear? He's never been the most mobile of fighters. Stand up. Perhaps that a, a legacy of his kickboxing and taekwondo bo a background, which is very much the foundation of his love of boxing. He only had 15 amateur fights. He really has been fast-tracked through the ranks, and that was a good jab from Hook. <laughs> Pietkin comes to this one without... Teddy Atlas in his corner, and there's been a switcheroonie in recent months. And Alexander Zimmer, it is, who is the man with the instructions and the guidance. Strong right hand from Pugyekin, that was landed on the gloves of Hook. See how upright it, the German is. Does that have that tendency to throw his head in the air when he launches punches? Povetkin does have fast hands and technique for a heavyweight. Crackling atmosphere here in Stuttgart. Right hand missed by a couple of inches from Povetkin, who's trying to claim centre of the ring. He's on the front foot already. Hook's the sort of guy that likes to come forward. A dust down of his shorts as if to say, well, yes, so what? Hook launches his own right hand and misses. The fighter's just failing to hit the target early on. Roughhousing up close, the crowd are loving it. Well, normally in Germany, it's as polite as you get. Slow clapping, gentle applause. I'll tell you what, this is partisan, this, this is like the old holes back home.
Chokes for the challenger. No real drama apart from that close-up scuffle midway through the first and already we've rattled through two and three quarter minutes. Swinging right hand missed by miles from Hook. Neither really landing. And how do you score that one? Well, no drama, and I suspect that Marco Hook will be grateful for that. He must have been slightly nervy about feeling a heavyweight's power for the first time. Canvassing and taking in, soaking up the instructions of the veteran Uli Wegner. He's been there and done it, hasn't he? Marshalled Sven Ocker, Marcus Bayer to World Championship success. Arthur Abraham as well, who's ringside tonight, all under the tutelage of that man. Well, the German national scarf wrapped patriotically round his shoulders. Now you see the just moments throughout the first round where they were just only just failing to, to find their range. And here we go, and almost a 10 to difficult to split them in the opener. Better jab that from Hook. Manages to take that left hook on the gloves as well. to dance out of distance there. Both of them trying to stand up in centre ring. We know that Kovyek can, can go the long haul. He's only ever been the 12 rounds twice, and he emerged on top on both occasions. He is unbeaten in 23, following on from a stellar, stellar amateur career. I think there might be a nick on the lip, but a bit of blood coming from the mouth of Marco Hook already. Better work from Pivyekin, who sharper punches, corners his man. And here comes Hook. He's a bit ungainly, he's a bit wild, but boy, you don't want to take your eyes off it. Well, Hook said in the build up to this one I, I sparred Pivyekin once. And he has bad memories of me. Well, let's see, let's see as we near the end of the second. It might just be that having blooded his man, Pavyekin just may be asserting in this one. He's just asking Kvyatkin to keep his punches up. End of the second, and I think that Kvyatkin probably just took control of that one. Not loads in it. There's the old boy, ringside, back in Germany. And maybe just eyeing up in a possible tilt uh, title against one of these guys. 
and in amongst all the ballyhoo and nonsense, easy to forget that it was a terrific effort from Chisora. And there's Alexander Zimin, who made a statement by leaving Tokyo to come to work with Povetkin. He does have big fight experience. He took Nikolai Valuev, the giant Russian, through six world title fights, culminating in that defeat, of course, to London's David Hay. So here we go. Are we in for the long haul? As we race into the third. Battle of the jabs at the moment. Pivet can seem to win that in the second round. And again, like David Hay against Vladimir Klitschko. He's struggling a bit, Hook, isn't he, to, to judge the right hand? It's just falling short on that. Hook said in the build up to this, I have a bigger heart than Kvyatkin, I have more willpower. And you fancy that somewhere down the stretch, both of those are going to be tested tonight. Terrific right hand up close, that from Kvyatkin. And again, just starting to find his measure and range, the Russian champion. Good body work, too. He does have that variety. I thought he was a bit more sort of composed or relaxed against Boswell in December. No, no, that was by design. I almost felt that Pivetkin's at his best when he uses speed and with sharp combinations of punches. And slightly nervy moments for Rui Wagner in the hook corner. No doubt that Kvyatkin has been brought along steadily with good timing by those handling him. He did twice have the opportunity to fight for Vladimir Klitschko's IBF title. He, he won that four-man tourney, didn't he, back in 2007, 2008, when he just outworked Eddie Chambers and then stopped Chris Bird later on. But that should have taken him to Klitschko's door, but they said, no, thank you. And again in 2010, I think Teddy Atlas was absolutely no way did he want to go near Klitschko. So here we are. Big right hand from Hook. And, uh, terrific, terrific end to the third. And Arthur Abraham is in town as well. And, yeah, hard for his man. I suspect that reaction underlining that that was probably another Pavetkin round. I have maybe drawn first and then Pavetkin taking the last two, but it is tight. What can Marco Hook do to turn the pattern of this fight? A couple of big eye-catching punches throughout that round. Cheeky uppercut from Pivetkin. And into the fourth we go. Yet 
Lincoln has the 16 stoppages in those 23 wins. Probably not renowned as a massive puncher. Okay. And then again, okay, Marco Hoop okay, probably okay, yeah, yeah. hasn't been hit quite as hard as this before. Tends to wear his men down. But yet, stopped Boswell in the eighth last time out. Only the second man to beat and stop the veteran American. Good jab from Hook on the retreat. Again, he misses with that big right hand, but he gets through with another one. And suddenly, Pavyekin seems all over the place. A Friday night on the cobble stuff here from Marco Hook. He's just launching himself at Pavyekin. And it may just be that he's ruffling the champion's feathers. That could be the key to unlocking the door to this fight. Again, Hook has a go. He caught that on the arm. Big right hand. And another in return from Pavyekin, who blows. This is a terrific round. He says that's it for Hook. He's got to outwork this man. Fatting body shots again from the Russian. Clubbing right hand over the top from Hook. Who pleads his innocence. There's no doubt he caught him on the back of the head, but just at the same time, Pavyek could have ducked down. Taxing fourth round coming to its conclusion. He's teeing up here, Marco Hook. The captain throwing dumbbells and all, and there's a right hand again. As Pavyekin dips down, and a better round, much, much better round for Captain Hook. And don't the home fans know it? Difficult to say quite how much trouble Pavyekin was in, but there's no doubt his right leg stuttered after that clubbing right hand, and he was forced into an uncomfortable posture. Marvel, deine Chance steht, Junge. No doubt that Hook was getting through in that corner, loving every single second of it. Marvel, in the middle, in the middle, Maybe that that was Marco Hook getting a football foothold in the fight. Newly married as well to the delightful Amina. He was out in Serbia last July. And he's doing the family proud right now. Marco Hukin, his name echoing around this Porsche arena. He might just have to shorten that right hand hook, he really is. He's almost touching the ring lights with the back of his hand as he pulls the trigger. goes again good jab from Pavyekin and that just forces a dribble of blood from the nose of Hook once again
challenger just out jabbing the champion. Pavetkin sweating, breathing. I think he's been forced to work at a pace. You say he can't work at that pace, but then he responds. He almost sneaked through the guard. Pavetkin working to the body again. Back comes Hurt. the Russian fans are chanting terrific atmosphere okay. again hook misses with the right hand both fighters just looking somewhat leg weary I think that fourth row may have taken it out of the pair Good jab again from Hurt. And they trade blows and body shots after the bell. And the referee has to step in. Well, they're getting bang for the buck. Bang for the buck in all the seats here in Stuttgart. They're loving every minute of it. Tough round to score that fifth. Couple of really tasty jabs from Hook, and I just wonder if he's forcing a way back into this fight. Tight, tight scoring again. Upper cut from Hook that just missed by Whiskers. Now we're approaching halfway in this WBA heavyweight title fight. Title that's been held by David Hay in recent years. Roy Jones Jr. back in 2003 beat John Ruiz for this very belt. Holyfield, well, enough said. Tyson in the 80s. The greatest himself are Lee, Frazier and Foreman throughout the 70s, all with the WBA belt around their waists. And Alexander Vivietkin, the current proud owner of it. And he's going to have to scrap for every inch tonight in that ring against Marco Hook. Well, clever stuff from Vivietkin. Doubled up the left hook and then turned it into an uppercut. He was a brilliant amateur, brilliant. Two European titles, one world championship, an Olympic gold in Athens. And all along the way, now a world champion to boot. He was always destined for great things, Pavetkin. from the Russian there might be a big disparity in weight a stone and a half between them on the scales at the way in uh, not much in height so much so actually Marco Hook a bit of mischief making in the build up big right hand and another one followed up from Hook he actually took a, a measuring tape with him to one of the press conferences just to double check the height of Pavetkin, who was recorded on some websites as being a little taller than he actually is. Okay, okay, okay. Um, battle of the jabs up close, but again, Hook looking for that uppercut. And it's Pavetkin with the response in the rally. A re-raise. 
Big right hand, and again, I saw in the back of the head, I think. Well, Marco Hook is he's no stranger to walking the thin line. And he's had points deducted in numerous world title fights along the way. He's a fighter, no doubt about that. And he trade punches again as the bell will sound at the end of another fascinating sixth. Wilfred Sauland, the promoter, ringside as well, with a nervy twitch of the eyes and a grimace, and the body language tells it all, doesn't it? Well, I don't know about you back home, but my scorecard is beginning to perplex even me. That's tight, really tight. I had Pavekin up by one going into the sixth. Now I'm, I'm absolutely not sure it was tight. <laughs> Alexander Zimin imploring Pivyekin to assert himself on this fight and on this man, the challenger, Marco Hook. Serbian born Hook, but a naturalized German and a Berlin native these days, and a massive, massive favorite in these parts. Again, the spray and flashing off the head of Marco Hook. Double uppercut in the right hand from Pivyekin. Okay, so far, Hook has answered the call, he's answered the power weight question, at least to halfway. His own right hand, and those sort of clubbing overhands, downward right hands have, have been troubling Pivyekin, at least they've knocked him out of his stride. Again, roughhousing from Hook. Glove on the face, the open glove on the face of Pivyekin, and then he teed off with the right hand. Uh, if nothing else, it is absolutely compelling. And the crowd are playing their part too. a warning there okay, no more, no more. wild swinging off balance miss from Pavyekin who just blows and exhales once again Hook looks to fend him off oh, that's terrific again from Pavyekin jab and then work to the body and then the uppercut he's got the skills he's got the combinations but he can't quite tame this guy And he's got his man on the ropes. The crowd are on their feet too. Another right hand and another one. Pivyekin turns his back. He's all over the place. Okay, okay, okay. Monumental effort from Marco Hook. Pivyekin looks tired. He looks really, really tired. And another couple of right hands at the end of this seven. Well, oh, there's another German-based world champion. They're all here ringside. Blood coming from the nose and the mouth of Marco Hook, who laid it all on the line. And surely all of that effort Good enough 
to win him that round. I, I've got the fight square. Marco, hast du jetzt verstanden? Reiß du dich zusammen. Du, der ist fertig, nicht du. Der ist fertig. Hände sind. Sheer persistence, pressure. And punches anywhere will do for Hook right now. Not all of it by the boot or by the rules, that's for sure. And here we go again. We're into the eight. I won't be grabbing a tea break anytime soon, folks. Marco Hook so far has showed that he's he's got the innate toughness to mix it with the big boys. And you'd have to say over the last four or five minutes he he might just be looking the stronger of the two. Big left hook from Fabiakin. Pavetkin with a massive uppercut. Hook is bleeding again and launching his own artillery forward. Well, Stuttgart might well be the the home of fancy fine German cars, and we had the strings and classical build up to this fight with the anthems, but all of that culture and finery is out the window here folks Marco Hook is trying to bludgeon his way to the heavyweight title and it looks as though he's having a bit of an effect too Pavetkin looks really weary and that right hand from Hook is not quite been able to time it at the straight one it's the sort of clubbing one to the side or back of the head that's has been his most successful punch final minute of the eight hook not really landing Oh, good right hand that from Pavetkin. Just a short, shortened that up, didn't he? Beautifully. It might have been in a, an important late rally that from Pavetkin too. And maybe that was a, enough to edge him the round. Another tight one. Well, a fight that in the early rounds looked as though it might be going Ale Alexander Pivyekin's way. Controlled boxing. Marco Hook couldn't quite time the right hands, but he's brought strength and that willpower that he spoke of in the build-up. He's brought all of that to bear. It's not always pretty, if the truth be told, but he's managed to find a way into the fight. And he's found a way to unnerve the champion. Into the night, all European affair, and this is a division, of course, dominated by European heavyweights, the Klitschko brothers, of course. Six of the top ten in the WBA rankings, their rankings alone are Europeans, including David Hay, of course, and the Finnish European champion, 
No, but Hellenius, I suspect given the, the connections, uh, Hellenius against the winner of this wouldn't be too unreasonable to envisage. A lovely left under the elbow there from Pivyekin. And Manchester got a second wind. It's a massive effort from Hook in the sixth and seventh rounds, and you could forgive him if he's just taken his foot off the gas a wee bit. Big right hand there from the challenger. Just made the decision that he's going to throw punches anywhere. If they land on the thigh, the, the ear, the, the gloves, whatever, he just missed with that uppercut. I, I think Pivetkin managed to cut those on the gloves. Another right hand. Pivetkin under pressure, covering up again. He has a look across to his corner. And again, that world weary look inside from Pivetkin. I'm going to say the sharper, cleaner boxing has come from the champion. There's no doubt about that. The judges are supposed to make their marks according to accuracy and force of punch, the weight of punch. It may just be that Pivetkin has, has shown most of that. Final 30 seconds of the ninth. It's been a good buckle, this clubbing double right to the body from the challenger. Separated by the referee again at the end of the ninth. Now we have a fight on our hands. So nahe warst du noch nicht dran, wie jetzt. Auf der Linke, es muss gerade kommen, du musst mal Linke hangen mit der Hand. One way and t'other. Pivetkin with a bright start, Hook with the middle rounds. I think Pivetkin is just beginning to assert once again, but... Das habe ich im Gefühl. Das habe ich im Gefühl. Du musst diese Runde kriegen, hast du mal verstanden? Verstehst du mir das? Hinführungsamt. Ein, zwei, Auferzahl. Schritt rückwärts, wenn er im Kopf ist. Well, he's animated and exuberant, Uli Wegner. Second spell working with Marco Hook. He turned 70 in April. The veteran corner man. Still with as much enthusiasm for the game as ever. And looking for another world champion on his books. This time in the heavyweight division, the, the biggest prize of all. Triple less left from Pavyekin. Ran into a jab, a piece there. And into the championship rounds we go, the hard yards. Then that scuffing right to the top of the head from Marco Hook. He says he loves Jackie Chan, Formula One, and football. You fancy he needs a, a Hollywood ending. A la Jackie Chan, maybe some of the speed of Michael Schumacher and the skills of Michael Ballack all rolled into one if he's to pull this through in the closing rounds. We've got 
got to be tired legs in there. There just has to be. It's been terrific pace. It's been a real battle, hasn't it, from the outset. Can Hook produce that relentless aggression in any way, shape or form through the last nine minutes? Inside the final minute of the 10. Okay, 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 okay. We are in Germany. German challenger. Points okay, looming. Yeah. I know what you're thinking, folks. I know what you're thinking. Tight, close, tense, hard fought fight so far. hands from Pivyekin that thudding right to the body and looks as though Hook is marked up under the left eye now as well he's certainly the more bruised and battered of the two fighters cut inside his lip bleeding through the nose and now there's a mark he's still punching still punching through all of that Marco Hook and looked on by the family you can only hope and pray. Nervy, nervy glances ringside as well from the misses. Well, let's be honest about it. Alexander Pivyekin looks absolutely knackered. What do you think? Pivyekin's round again? I think he might just have taken the last two or three on my scorecard, but I'm not going to argue with you. Two more rounds. Pivyekin with the fast hands and the, the quick start. Maybe that weight and strength and power coming to bear after all. Maybe it's just natural ability in the final analysis. Tired, stagger backwards from okay, okay, the champion. There's no doubt he's been hurried. He's he's been hustled, hasn't he, Kvyatkin? For the last few rounds, he's definitely shown a champion's heart when he's dug in, quite literally. Okay, no worries, go, no worries, go. It could just be that he's pulling it out as well. Michael okay, Hook okay, is no starting to mark up around the face quite significantly now. Okay, no worries, no, no worries, Those Russian drums beating. There's been a continual cacophony of noise throughout. Right hand from Hook. Again, Pivyek can force backwards. Staggery and ragged. Defence slightly scattered, and back comes the champion again. Very tired legs out there. Pivyekin looks again, sort of ill at ease. Big left hand from Pivyekin. He swung that with his full body weight. 
30 seconds of the penultimate round. Hook goes a wandering, beckons Pubyekin forward. The Russian accepts that challenge. Closing moments of the 11th. Referee has to split them again. And now it's Hook's turn to back off. And it looks as though it'll be another Alexander Pivyekin round. Hook is badly marked up. Now there's a cut in the right eye and bruising underneath it. And it looks as though Alexander Pivyekin is now beginning to put clear daylight between himself and his rival. Well, they can hardly look, the loved ones, and you can understand why. You saw it shot previously of Pivyekin's uh, wife, Irina. You got a daughter, Arina, as well, and there, there was just a, a picture ringside of Marco Hook's new wife, Amina. Yeah, had her hand cupped across her eyes, she could barely look, and here's why. Couple of afters. And it's been give and take throughout. And here we are with the closing three minutes. You fancy Hook probably needs a knockout, and it looks as though Pivyekin is going looking for it. Crunching left to the body that from Pivyekin. You gotta say fair play to the Russian champion. He looked at a spot of bother in the middle rounds. Which is though Hook might just have gone all in throughout those rounds and that has left him slightly vulnerable down the stretch. been stopped just the once Hook and you know, it's in similar circumstances that brave brave challenge in the cruiserweight title where he went all out for his own late knockout he succumbed like in 2007 to Steve Cunningham himself oh massive right hand is there to be a miracle late on for the challenger Marco Hook? Pivyekin took it well. And back he comes again. Well, just as though it looked as though the headlines were written and the story was set to follow its pattern. Marco Hook with a trailblazing right. Tired man in there inside the final minute. Pivyekin comes back for more. Jabs now from Marco Hook, bit late for that. He's got to throw everything here. Pull out the kitchen sink from your shorts, fella. Now is the hour. Tired men, staggering, weary legs. Final 30 seconds. Pavetkin comes forward again, leaves himself open. Well, we are into the final seconds. Another right hand from Hook. Pavetkin's done in, but I think he might just have done enough. Big right hand again from Hook. He's landed more of those in the last round than he did in the entire fight. And oh, Pavyekin staggering backwards. It looks like he's probably done enough to hang on to his title. Amazing scenes here in Stuttgart. A wonderful, terrific effort from the challenger Marco Hook. A sensational closing round. Tears ringside. But 
Will there be tears of joy in the Russian camp in just a few moments' time? Well, they've got their money's worth ringside. There was a partisan carnival atmosphere right from the outset. Alexander Pribyekin has been pushed to the absolute limit. He looks like he could drink a reservoir of water and sleep for a fortnight. And meanwhile, in the opposite corner, Hook being patched up. Those the badges of bravery. Boy, did he leave it all in there tonight. We asked at the outset, at the start, would he be big enough, powerful enough, strong enough, hit hard enough, or simply be good enough? He answered in almost every department, perhaps, maybe, perhaps, maybe in the latter. There you see Pivyetkin's brother Vladimir beyond him in the yellow and black. Promotes are in, shaking hands. The Russians think their man has done enough. And for what it's worth, I think that he has done so as well. I had to give that last round to Hook. Right, and for what it's worth, and you'll have your own cards. I've got it 116, 113 for Pavyekin. Stranger things have happened in this country, that's for sure. Ice pack for the champion, at least for another few minutes. Hook with a salute to his faithful, rowdy fans. Well, what a fight. I tell you what, you wouldn't mind seeing it again. Chisora's ringside, he'll want his shot. The likes of Helenius, a possibility, I guess, but well, you'd, you wouldn't mind a rematch. Cue a controversial decision, perhaps. A tight one, maybe. And still he blows. Here we go. Contest of Vitiene Otai. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to the scorecards. Philip Verbeke aus Denzin, Belgien scores the bout 114 114. 114 zu 114. Well, the Belgian judges got it a draw. Doyle, Wolverhampton, England scores the bout. 116, 113, 116, 113. On Stanley Christodoulou, South Africa scores the bout 116, 112, 116, 112. Für den neuen und alten Weltmeister im Schwergewicht still heavyweight champion of the world. Retains his title and makes a second defense, but boy was he made to sweat, and in the eyes of one judge, it was a draw, not much in it, hard fought, but business as usual for Alexander Pivyetkin, who takes his unbeaten run and the garlands that go along with it to 24, but I tell you what, he'll need a rest after that one. A terrific, terrific, pulsating fight here in Germany has gone the way of Alexander Pivyetkin, but maybe that man has proved that he's got a place among the big boys in the land of the Giants. Hope you enjoyed our top of the bill from Stuttgart. Alexander Pivyetkin, WVA champion still.